Hey guys and girls, this is Alish from GameMediaLab.com. Welcome to my exciting world of live audio mixing. Yamaha Commercial Audio just announced a new expansion to their Rivage lineup of uh, live sound consoles. And we will take a look at the control surfaces, the new DSP engines, the new firmware which they have released. And we will talk about the pricing, everything that it has to do with this new release. But before we do that, make sure that you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out on any of these videos, which I try posting every week. But you know, when something like this happens, this is going to be a special episode. So with everything said and done, let's just start the show. Let's go. Yamaha Commercial Audio just announced that they are releasing new additions to their Rivage series. They are adding two more control surfaces, the PM5 and the PM3 and two new DSP engines, the RX and the EX. Plus, in addition to that, they will be releasing a new firmware version 4.0. What is great with the entire range is that all consoles will have the same fader count. So you will have 38 faders with three fader banks of 12 faders plus two master faders. So that doesn't change across the Rivage series lineup from the PM10 which is the largest one and remains to be the largest one to the PM3, which is the smallest one. Every one of those control surfaces will have the same fader count. Both consoles, the new consoles, the PM5 and the PM3 have been reduced in depth. So they have been shortened so that you have a more comfortable position when you are mixing. Uh, with easier access to all of the touch screens and all of the controls, which is great, especially for monitoring engineers and when you want to um, have better line of sight when it comes to your show and not be bogged down by large screens and everything in front of you. The physical depth has been shortened by removing the uh, channel strip names, which uh, have now been moved to the touch screens. Uh, they are now also bigger and brighter, so easier to read. They have also moved the metering to the side of the channel and the metering is now displayed in stereo. It also has indication for dynamic processing as well. The shortness of the frame has also been achieved by removing a row of encoders. Now you only have one row of encoders and you have the option of um, selecting what that encoder does via a switch on the control surface and selecting it on the touchscreen. The PM3, which is the smaller version, only has one 15 inch touchscreen, while the PM5, which is a bit larger, will have three 15 inch touchscreens, which is great because now you'll have the ability to sort of match your fader base to the 15 inch touchscreens. So let's talk about DSP, two new engines, the RX, the smaller one, and the EX, the larger one. The smaller one, the RX DSP, is going to provide 120 input channels, uh, 48 mix buses, and 24 matrices, while the EX, the larger one, will have the capability of processing 288 inputs, 72 mix buses, and 36 matrices. They are all interchangeable, so you can take any control surface and marry it with any of the DSPs. Um, the DSPs will then sort of dictate how many channels they can process and also dictate how many plugin slots you have available to you. Um, but it is great because you can basically build your show file on, on one console and then easily just open it on another with no file conversion. It is just basically um, opening the same file on a, a different console and there you go. The only thing that you will have to sort of um, take stock of is the change of the input output and maybe some of the uh, effect processing for the TC Electronics series, which will differ between uh, the systems. What's new in the new firmware version 4.0? Uh, the PM7 users or owners will be delighted to hear that they have had a channel upgrade from 120 to 144 input channels and they have 12 more additional matrix outs. 
uh, but the new uh, firmware, which is new and interchangeable across all of the uh, Rivage consoles, will also bring the new Eventide 2016 Reverb, which is a great sounding processor. It will also be compatible with the monitor mix application, so you can now mix your monitors on your own, which is especially great for house bands or even monitoring engineers uh, running on stage doing um, line checks or uh, p patching so they can see what's going on, which is a great addition to have when you are working with these consoles. Another thing that has been added is the control for the Lisa systems. So Yamaha is now also included in the lineup of consoles that can uh, process this immersive audio system uh, directly from the console itself. Let's talk about price point then. It hasn't been discussed or uh, disclosed actually, but it has been mentioned during their Facebook Live event that these new consoles will be closer in price to the CL series range than to the Ravage PM10 or the PM7 series. So we expect to have basically the same or slightly higher pricing than the CL series, which I think is going to be um, very, very aggressive, um, very, very competitive in terms of pricing. And I think these new consoles will find their way into the touring world will find their way into houses of worship. It will, they will find their way into uh, maybe cruise ships, um, everywhere where they need especially exquisite and uh, great audio, but a smaller footprint um, for these control surfaces. This was it for this episode. Let me know in the comments below which one of these consoles is your favorite and if you like this sort of gear review a type of video so I can start making them more often in the future. While you're doing that, like, share, subscribe. Don't forget to visit GainMediaLab.com for more audio deliciousness and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, makes great shows and uh, stay safe. Bye.